Hi everyone and welcome. We're down here in my wormery and if you've been watching my channel lately the fact that this bin is out here in front of you might suggest something because the past couple times I've started a video with this bin out here in front of us it usually led to us going into those bins back there into the red wiggler bins specifically the ones on the top shelf there and extracting worms to load into this bin because as of 10 days ago this bin was still not yet occupied so 10 days ago we went ahead and we grabbed a bunch of volunteer worms, threw them in here, maybe a thousand, maybe a little more. And since that time, those original 1,000 worms were joined by another, maybe another thousand worms. That was only three days ago. So between that first population going in and having run of the place for a whole week and with those additional worms being added three days ago, um, we're now up to maybe what's a little bit over 2,000 worms, maybe 2,500 or so worms hanging out in this relatively small tub. And um, after 10 days, I would have to think that the food that this bin was originally built with is probably starting to run a little bit low. So for that reason, I came prepared for today with uh, a little tray of different food items. This will count as this bin's first feeding. And it's a pretty generous amount. It consists of numerous different things, banana peels and uh, a bunch of really moldy chunks of bread. If you watched my moon video, maybe a month ago, almost a month ago, it was uh, the March moon, is also known as the worm moon. I introduced this loaf of bread as the full moon, or representing the full moon, and since that time, that bread has really, really taken on a life of its own so it's becoming very uh it's becoming very moldy and as you can imagine after that much time it's become very dry and stale so uh the worms are going to get that and then there's a bunch of other things here a dented up potato that started spoiling some even chestnuts a whole bunch of different things i'm even curious to see how a couple of these other items are going to do i've got a no-no item in here not such a big deal because you do notice eventually that the worms do eat it a little half of a tangerine, some citrus, and a buddy of mine has been um, wanting so much to see how these avocado pits work in a worm bin. I figure since we got a new worm bin starting, I'm going to grab a couple of these avocado pits that he's been donating to see how those uh, turn out in the worm bin. So they don't feel too substantial, but they are very hard. I don't know if they'll soften up, but we're going to give it a try. The other, um, the other thing about this bin is that uh, you might remember last time when we were in here adding the worms, the most recent batch of worms, I did mention that I'd be open to the idea of adding even more worms to this bin, but probably not many more. And I've made the decision that the last group of worms that are going to be added to this bin are the ones that are even now still working on the three chamber carbon time lapse bin. And as of today, that's been going for 146 days. The time lapse that I posted, which is pretty popular on my channels, only captures the first 100 or so days. So for another 45 days since then, that bin has been continuing. And there was one significant feeding remaining in that bin that I wanted to try, which was to take a lot of that cardboard paper materials, grind it up really fine into a almost um, like shredded, and then use that as the final feeding just to see if there's a bit uh, an advantage to presenting that type of material to them in a more fine form to see if they're able to consume it more quickly. So that was the main basis of uh, wanting to leave that to run a little longer so that I could produce that last time lapse in that bin. So that bin's going to get emptied out into here so that we can examine the contents and see how things turned out in that bin. So that's the other reason I wanted to get this thing fed so that the last group of worms that we're going to add in here tomorrow uh, have enough food since there's already a fairly large population in here. So, all right, let's get to work on this. Something you may have noticed is the little creepy crawlies running around the bin. And uh, these are little mites. There's not that many of them and they're very hard to see because they're so tiny. But I've been observing them in these bins of mine for a couple weeks now. I'm really starting to wonder if this is going to escalate. I really hope not. I haven't seen enough to make me really worry, so I haven't really reacted yet. So um, we'll just keep an eye on that. This piece of plastic is doing a nice job <laughs> keeping the moisture down so that the worms can enjoy it down within the bin. 
But look at this dopey little guy. Ended up inside the plastic bag. And I'm sure it's not going to be easy to find his way out of there. So I'm going to just help him out a little bit. What would these worms do without me? <laughs> well, I'll have to keep an eye on that too. Because I don't know how much trouble that can cause. If a worm gets uh, stuck in there. Although I'm sure if they start feeling distressed, they'll just keep moving, moving, moving until they finally find their way out, hopefully. Most of these bags are full of holes anyhow, so. This bag's job was to keep the moisture down. It's pretty cool how it's got a bunch of castings stuck to it all over the place. And um, these pieces of scrap paper were laid on here to try to plug up some holes that were beginning to show on this newspaper that covers the top layer. So there were only a couple holes here, and um, they're definitely increasing in size. And I believe that's got a lot to do with that piece of plastic, because the plastic is a very new addition for me. I've never paid a great deal of attention to um, the moisture level in my bins, although I have started getting the feeling lately that maybe I run my bins a little more dry than they need to be. And that if they were a little bit more damp, that things might move more rapidly in the bins. So the simple addition of putting a little plastic sheet of paper over the top seems to be helping tremendously. Not allowing for that moisture to wick through the material, escape out to the air, and be lost from the bin. So this cover is not much of a cover anymore. <laughs> it's really turning into bedding, but um, I believe I'm going to stick to the Stick to the same thing we've been doing till now, which is just to use everything I've got. Come in here and stick to the plan. If the plan was to add food, do that, and then take into consideration any other needs that the bin might have. And at this point, maybe I'll come prepared next time with a new cover paper. And we'll just reuse that one for bedding purposes. But for now, we're just gonna uh, put everything back the way we found it once we finish. So um, let's figure out how we're gonna feed. My typical feeding approach is right down the middle. I like to open up a gap, drop the food right down in the middle, and then put some sort of a marker to show that that's where I had fed last. It's always a little bit of a surprise to see how a, uh, a brand new worm bin is doing after it's been launched. So I think these worms are looking pretty comfortable in here. They're all over the middle section here. And I'm not, I'm not treating the middle section here as where the feeding zone had been previously because previously when I built the bin, like I, like I built all my bins, I usually include food all around the entire bin uh, when I initially build it. And um, that's no different here. This bin was built the same way with a fair amount of food scattered all around the bin. So there's no real reason why they should be here in one particular spot. So maybe maybe this is representative of the entire bin. Maybe across the entire bottom of the bin there's this many worms to be found. I'm not sure. I'm not going to examine the bottom layer of the entire bin all the way around. But it's a nice thing to think. And it's totally plausible especially since we know how many worms we've added to this bin since the start. So let's get this food ready. Now besides the food tray that I showed earlier, I've also got a couple staple items that I include in most of my feedings, one of which is the leaves I've got here. And the leaves are going to be the bedding of this feeding, but not the fresh leaves. I think I'll just take some of these old leaves that have been sitting on the top of the bin for a while now. And we'll lay in some of that as bedding for this new feeding. And I'll just use the fresh leaves fresh out of the box to cover up with at the end. But this will give a chance for some of this material that's already been in the bin for some time now to uh, 
really get down where the action is going to be. So we've got a good size little platform here. Drop our food into. And um, no fanfare. We'll just drop it right in. And spread it around. Hope for the best. Interesting selection of different food items in here. Somehow I think the banana is going to be the first to go. <laughs> Got a feeling the bread's going to be pretty popular since it's all moldy and nasty already, but it is very hard. It might take time for it to soften up. And here's a potato. It's a pretty good sized chunk, so that might take some time. And I guess we'll see about these pits. Um, Carl Rub. Yeah, nice selection of food items here. And along with the other staple items that go with most feedings is the grit. Grit, just a very fine, coarse material that the worms can use in their gizzards to aid in digestion. Give them a nice, generous quantity. And I have a little bit of coffee here. It's only been a couple days since I fed a large number of worms. So I'll just go ahead and I'll dump out all this coffee that's accumulated over those past couple days. That'll be a nice covering for this first feeding. Okay, so we'll just reuse some of this older stuff that's been down here for a while now to cover up partially. And then we could scatter some nice fresh leaves across the top. What are these worms doing over here? So yeah, I guess this material is pretty much just occupied by worms all over the place. No concentration of them anywhere since there was no real particular feeding zone any place. So there's just worms all over the place occupying the entirety of the bin. Although now that we've got one focused place where the feeding has occurred right down here in the middle, I've got a feeling things are going to change. Keeping with tradition, we're going to use a used coffee filter, a nice new one here to indicate that this is where the feeding occurred. And then we'll start with the replacement of all the things that we took off. And, you know, like I said, I'm not looking to do anything other than feed today. So I'll just replace this top cover sheet of newspaper, taking into account that the next time this bin gets fed, it'll probably be in need of a new one. And, uh, and for that matter, this piece of paper was actually a second piece of paper that was covering the very top here which already succumbed to all the holes and the moisture and being tattered by the worms. So it's already sort of gone into its uh, next phase of service. <laughs> it's no longer serving as a top sheet here anymore. It's more of a, uh, more of a band-aid, I guess, to cover up some of the holes. But I guess I'll consider replacing both of those sheets next time we come in here with fresh newspaper, fresh piece of kind of shopping bag paper and then we'll get this layer of vapor protection back in place again we've got a couple worms must have come off of the paper that was resting over there on top of it so we'll put that back in and now we've got a pretty good setup here I'm really liking what these plastic bags are doing they're doing an excellent job keeping the moisture down within the bin um, just making it much less of a uh, hassle. Not having to always worry if your bins are drying out because there's excessive evaporation going on. That'll be a thing of the past once the summertime rolls around, but right now it's still um, cool enough that the heat in the house is running, forced hot air, which is also very dried out air, and um, soon the windows will be open, moisture from the outside air will be coming in, and it won't be as dry in here as it's been all winter. So. Um, Let's take a quick peek at that three-layer bin, the one that's going to be the, uh, uh, the one that we're emptying into here tomorrow. So we get over to where the time lapse is happening. We have to go behind the curtain. And I can see that there was just a frame taken. The preview of the last frame taken had just flashed on the screen there momentarily. And now it's about a minute away from getting the next picture taken. So like I said, 145 days now, and 45 days have elapsed since the last time we saw it. 
in the 100 day long video time lapse showing the uh, the origin of the bin and um, the worms are doing a great job in here they look pretty happy so all right tomorrow we get to see what's happening inside this bin can't wait all right everyone that's it for today thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did as always please remember to give me a thumbs up that's always really appreciated and also consider becoming a subscriber to the channel as well that's really appreciated too have a great day thanks for watching bye